Thank you, Joe. It's uh, great to be here today, and thank you all for taking some time uh, to be with us. As you're aware, we had planned to hold this event last Thursday, but out of respect for the tragedy which occurred in Charleston, we moved this press event until today. We appreciate your understanding and know that our prayers remain with those families and the Charleston community. As we began the search for a new coach to lead the Clemson baseball program, we identified a few characteristics we wanted in that candidate. We wanted someone who would infuse energy and optimism into the program, create a new momentum, and build upon the great foundation of Clemson baseball. Someone who could fit into our community, understands what our program is all about, and welcomes the expectations that we have for our program. During this process, I had some great assistance and guidance, and I want to thank a few people. Uh, first of all, President Clements, members of our Clemson Board of Trustees, uh, many former players uh, that I spoke with during the process, Janie Hodge, our faculty athletic rep, Max Allen, uh, our chief of staff uh, for uh, Dr. Clements, and uh, four members of our athletic department senior staff, Tim Match, Joe Galbraith, Graham Neff, and Kyle Young, who is our sport administrator uh, for our baseball program. Monty Lee has had a lifetime of experience in our state and has had success at each stop during his career journey. He's a native of Spartanburg, a graduate of Lugoff Elgin High School, and an inaugural member of the College of Charleston's Baseball Wall of Fame. I know Monty fills every one of the criteria we're looking for in a head coach, and I'm excited to welcome him and his family uh, to our Clemson family. It's my pleasure to welcome Coach Monty Lee. What a day. <laughs> um, can't tell everybody here how excited I am to be here today. Um, there's a number of people that I would like to thank. I'd like to thank President Jim Clements, uh, Athletic Director Dan Radakovich, the Board of Trustees, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is a dream job of mine. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't even know if I could put into words how excited I am about this opportunity. Uh, for my family, uh, for my friends, uh, and for myself. Um, just extremely excited about it. Um, I want to thank my family uh, for being here today. Uh, my wife, Erin, uh, my four girls, Madeline and Shelby and Blair and Alexa. Um, my mother is here today and my grandfather. So I'm excited to see them today and have them be here uh, for me uh, on such a special occasion. Uh, and also two of my best friends and their families are here today as well. And I can't thank them enough for taking the time out of their day to be here on such a special day. Um, I'd like to thank um, the College of Charleston uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, as a young man to be a head coach. And uh, all of my former players, which is more important to me than anything, is my relationships with the players that I will coach here at Clemson and all the players that I've coached in the past. I'm a relationships-oriented person, first and foremost. All the coaches that I've worked under and have worked with me, all the administrators uh, in my career, uh, I cannot thank them enough, and I would not be here today if it wasn't for them. Why Clemson? Why Clemson? What is so attractive about this job and this opportunity for someone like me? I think one of the biggest things that stands out about Clemson is the tradition of this program and the consistency of this program. Our fan base that comes to support our programs here at Clemson is second to none. And when you look at D Doug Kingsmore Stadium, and I've been here uh, many times, uh, it's as rabid a fan base as there is in all of college baseball. And, and we really appreciate their support um, moving forward. The tradition of Clemson is second to none. It's been led by two men 
over the last, and I hope I have this year right. It's, it's, it's impressive to me for 58 years between Bill Wilhelm and Jack Leggett. When you look at what these two men accomplished over their career here at Clemson, it's incredible. 2,116 wins at Clemson between these two men. When you look at Bill Wilhelm, 17 regular season ACC championships, seven tournament championships is an ACC record. Six trips to Omaha. His 1991 team won 60 games. I don't even know how you do that, which is an ACC record. The Clemson baseball program is in the top 10 in NCAA history in wins and has won more ACC titles than any other program. Jack Leggett, who Coach Wilhelm handed the torch to, 22 years, three ACC titles, six trips to Omaha, nine Super Regionals, 21 Regionals. His 1994 team won 57 games, which is the second most in ACC history. That is tradition, and that is one of the main draws for me to be here at Clemson is to be able to follow such two great men. Who am I? Who is Monty Lee? For those of you that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet and, and, and want to, to try to do that uh, over the next few days, if at all possible. Um, I'm a South Carolina guy. I was born in the upstate of South Carolina. I was raised in, in Lugolf, South Carolina. And one of the things that I've been very fortunate in my career is I've lived in South Carolina my whole life and I've coached in South Carolina my whole life. Not many people get that type of opportunity. Like I said earlier, relationships are more important to me than anything, especially with my players. One thing that I can promise you is that I will have tremendous relationships with my staff, with the people that work here at Clemson, with the fan base here at Clemson, and my players, because without them, I have nothing. Growing up in the state of South Carolina, like I'm sure most of you here, we don't have any professional sports in South Carolina. College baseball is huge in this state. And when you grow up in South Carolina, like I have, you're on one side of the fence or the other. This rivalry is second to none in college baseball. And I can tell you this, we are going to do our best here at Clemson to recruit the kind of kids that could come in here and knock down that fence to play for us. The kids of South Carolina will be our utmost priority. We will recruit this state inside and out. But we will also recruit nationally. We will go to all parts of this country to recruit the best and brightest student athletes that we can find because the Clemson brand is nationwide. What kind of teams will we have here at Clemson? There's one thing that we can control day in and day out, and that's our attitude and our effort. And I can promise you our players will come to the ball field every day, to the classrooms every day, in our community every day, and in the weight room every day with a tremendous attitude and give this university and this program tremendous effort in everything that they do. We are going to recruit kids with tremendous makeup, kids that are grinders on the field, kids who are confident in their ability, kids that will represent our program and our school well. We will play hard. We will play fast. And our teams will play extremely loose. We will enjoy game day. All the hard work and preparation that goes into this by these kids in this program to get ready for the season, we want them to embrace and enjoy playing for Clemson University. And I look forward, I want every player in this program to look forward to coming to the field every single day.
Our teams will always be on offense. Everything we do, we will be offensive. When we're pitching, we will attack. When we're on defense, we will attack. When we are on offense, we will attack. When we run the bases, we will attack. We will not do anything defensively when it comes to our mindset. We will be offensive in everything that we do. We want players who have no fear of failure because this game is full of failure. If, you're, uh, if you fail 70% of the time as a hitter, you're hitting 300. So we are going to eliminate the fear of failure from our players. We were going to get them to embrace it, accept it, and deal with it and play with full-out aggression. We're going to create an identity within this program. I think that's very, very important that every player in this program understands what our identity is, what our culture is in our sport, in academics, in the community, and in the weight room. Those are the four areas that we will create an identity here at Clemson. We will have an acronym that will embrace all four areas. Okay? And it is Tigers. T will be for toughness. Everything that we do, we will be mentally tough and physically tough. We will work extremely hard to develop these guys to be mentally tough in every phase of being an athlete here at Clemson. I will be for integrity. We're going to recruit kids with high moral compasses that do the right things that are going to represent this university very well. G, gratitude. I can assure you of one thing. Our players will be grateful for the opportunity that they have here at Clemson and all that encompasses being a student athlete. We will have a get-to over a have-to mentality in everything we do. These players will understand they, they get to be a part of this program that they get to be a part of this university, that they get to play in front of a fan base that is second to none. They don't have to do any of it. We will be grateful for everything that Clemson embodies to a student athlete. E will be for excellence. We will strive for perfection in everything we do to achieve excellence. R, relentless. Our effort will be relentless in all phases of our identity, in the sport of baseball, in the classroom, in the community, and in the weight room. Our effort will be tremendous. We will be relentless in our pursuit of our goals. S, selfless. We will have a we over me mentality from the very beginning in everything we do. It will be about our team, our brotherhood, our chemistry, all things. It will be a we. I will speak as we, not I. We will do this. We have to improve in these areas. We are doing an excellent job in these areas. This is a we thing here at Clemson. We will be selfless. I cannot thank you enough for this opportunity. Go Tigers. I think that the biggest thing that we will establish within the culture of the program very early is that the fall practice session will be tough. We are going to try to apply pressure to our players in the fall so that they are ready for any situation that they will face in the spring. That's a big part of, of what will lead to our success. We want to apply pressure in the fall section of the year so that when the season starts, our guys can go play. You don't work the game of baseball. We're going to go to work in the fall, but you don't work the game of baseball. You play the game of baseball. So when they cross those lines in the season, when we're playing a 56-game schedule against extremely tough opponents, we want to play. 
And that's the, that's the message that I'm going to send these guys, is all that hard work, all that pressure that, and expectations that we're going to have for these guys and how we practice and how we do things. When we get to the season, that's where you reap those benefits and enjoy it. So I'm going to be extremely loose during the season, extremely loose in the dugout. I have to put out the vibe that we're going to be able to handle pressure. If we're down by two runs, so what? The time runs on deck, the winning runs in the hole. You know, that's my mindset is to create a culture in the dugout that we're loose, we're going to have fun, we're going to let it fly, we're going to have fun and, and compete at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, coach, you, you talked about the success of the previous coaches, including Jack Leggett, who's had tremendous success in getting to the postseason last five years, not so much in the tournament. In terms of embracing those expectations and coming here, how do you handle that as a coach, knowing just getting to the tournament is not high enough in terms of raising the bar for this program? I understand the expectations of Clemson, and I embrace those expectations. Um, listen, this is a program that can compete at the national level. The only reason that I would want to come and coach at Clemson is because we have the opportunity to get to Omaha here. Outside of the fact that this is a tremendous community, a tremendous opportunity, a great place to live and raise a family, this is a great program with a great tradition, but the expectations, I understand those and embrace those. We're going to try our best to do everything in our power to get to the College World Series and win a national championship, and you can do it from Clemson. So as far as the expectations, we will embrace them. Money, you emphasize recruiting this state heavily, and you've seen both at the college as well as other schools in this state how much they've succeeded there. How do you set about bringing the best in-state recruits to Clemson? I think the one thing that I bring to the table right away is I have relationships across this state that I believe are second to none. I think when it comes to me being able to reach out to all the different pockets of this state, I have strong connections in every area. Um, I know Bradley LaCroix, my assistant, has strong connections in this, in, in this state as well. We'll be able to find the best and the brightest players in this state and hit the ground running. But that doesn't mean necessarily that we won't go outside of the state. We'll go into the state of Georgia, Florida, the whole East Coast, the Midwest, uh, the West Coast. We're going to go wherever we have to go to get the best players that fit our program. Back. Being an alumni of College of Charleston, how difficult, even though it is Clemson, how tough was it to take this job? The hardest part, Darren, about taking this job was calling all the players at the College of Charleston to let them know from me that, that I was going to be leaving them. That's the hardest part. You know, the College of Charleston will always be a special place to me. It's my alma mater. They gave me an opportunity to be a student athlete. I got my degree from there. But the, the hardest part for me is leaving the players. You know, I love the players that I recruited to the College of Charleston, I got, and I had the privilege to coach. And uh, it'll always be a special place. It's the relationships and the players that I had to leave that was the hardest part for me. One more back. Yeah, Coach, um, along that same line, in terms of building relationships here with the current players, what's that process been like? I know it's only been a few days, but how have you gone about reaching out to some of the players that are playing all over the country right now in terms of helping build that foundation of the, those relationships you talked about? My first two priorities is to reach out to all the incoming players. I met with the incoming players on move-in day. Um, I've reached out to a lot of the returning players. You know, I just switched cell phones, so that's been a little bit of an issue trying to get in touch with all of them. But they have, they all have my number. Some of them have texted me and called me and welcomed me. Some of them are here today. I mean, how special is that to have, you know, current players, incoming players here today uh, to support me? I, um, but it's a priority. It's a priority for me to, to reach out to those guys to make sure that from day one that the relationship between me and the players is extremely important. I've reached out to all of our kids uh, that are incoming, uh, our commitments. Uh, so uh, that's been the biggest priority for me, along with trying to round out my coaching staff. And then we've got to hit the ground running and recruiting. How well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, how well do you know Jack Leggett and have you spoken to him since the hiring was decided upon last week? I know Coach Leggett very well. Um, and um, I, will, um, I will make sure when the timing is right for both of us uh, to be able uh, to talk to him about this program, the tradition here, all of the things that he accomplished. Um, when the timing is right for both of us, um, we will make that happen. Mark, you mentioned that tradition and all the wins and 
trips to Omaha, how much harder is it now to do that than it was in previous eras? Well, that's very difficult. I mean, and, and there's some things within the rules and regulations of the NCAA that create parity in college baseball. I think if you look at, um, you know, just the fact of 27 on scholarship, 11.7 scholarships, um, that, you know, having to, to offer a kid uh, 25%, it's different than the old days. The old days, you could offer uh, that 11.7 scholarships however you wanted, book scholarships to, you know, 100% if you wanted. You had a lot more flexibility, and, uh, and you could go get a kid from South Carolina for a book scholarship. That's not the case anymore. You have to pass on those guys, and a lot of times those guys wind up being really, really good players. Uh, so I think that the rules that have been put in place over the last few years um, definitely have created some parity. Uh, it does make it harder. You're seeing uh, more and more teams uh, advance from uh, from regionals to super regionals and even get to Omaha, who may not be traditional powers. Um, but uh, you can do it from here. There's no question about that. The expectation is going to be for us to get to Omaha. It's one of the reasons why I'm here, because you can get to Omaha from Clemson, and uh, that's what we're going to start working extremely hard towards getting to. Uh, Bradley LaCroix uh, will be staying on staff, uh, and I am working tirelessly uh, to find the right fit when it comes to a pitching coach. Um, so uh, I'm in the process of doing that right now, and uh, hopefully uh, within the next few days. I don't have a timetable on that. I want to make sure I get that right. But I also want to make sure, because of the sense of urgency with recruiting, that I get somebody in place who can do a heck of a job for us here at Clemson. I also want to make sure I find a pitching coach who is a great fit for our pitching staff when it comes to developing these pitchers, working with these pitchers. Uh, there's a lot involved in that hire that's very important. I am not a pitching guy. So I'm going to make sure that I hire somebody that I can turn over the keys to that car and let him run with it. So, uh, but I am actively engaged in that process and hope to make a decision on that uh, within the next few days, if possible. Time for two more. One back. Monty, your office used to overlook Emmanuel AME Church. Um, last week, you know, what was your react? How tough to see a place that you know so well to see that happen? I think it just really puts things in perspective when it comes to life. Um, the important, what's truly important uh, when you see a tragedy uh, like we saw in Charleston uh, the last few days that the people of Charleston and the families involved have to deal with, um, it, it puts things in perspective. Um, I don't know if I have the words really um, to, to say about the impact of something like that outside of um, it's a terrible tragedy to happen in a city of hospitality where people come to enjoy themselves and enjoy life, the holy city of Charleston. Um, it's a tragedy. So it, it's, um, I think uh, we absolutely did the right thing in terms of moving it to today. And uh, out of respect to the city of Charleston and the families involved, and it's a, it's a complete tragedy. And uh, my prayers go out to all their families and all the people that are involved. Time for one more. Just your reaction to Matt Heath getting your old job? I'm so excited for Matt. Obviously, Matt and I have talked quite a good bit. I tried hard, uh, but the opportunity to be a head coach, uh, he has to take that opportunity. I could not be more thrilled for him. Uh, he knows... Um, all the players there, the recruiting there, the system there that we had in place. You know, he's like my brother. You know, he's one of my best friends. So I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, but he and I already are getting, uh, you know, pretty competitive when it comes to some of the recruits. I already told him, I said, hey, buddy, you better, better back off some of these guys because I may try to get them to come to Clemson. But uh, we, uh, he's one of my best friends. He's one of the best baseball men that I know. He's a principles-oriented guy, and I think he will do an outstanding job at the College of Charleston. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.